Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for March 11th of 2022. Almost spring here in the northern half of the world. Oh my goodness. All right. So um, if you are new here to 50 Questions Friday, Please do, if you're live, please do drop your questions here in the questions tab. And otherwise, here on the chat side, there's a lot of phenomenal people who always show up and participate and help answer questions too. So please do feel free to chat. Um, if you are watching this after the fact on YouTube and you would like to join us live, just sign up for the newsletter at Twisted Sage and we will let you know when that occurs. So let's see. We're going to go ahead and start today, as always, by taking the three breaths to go into the heart space. Then we'll go through some email questions, and then we'll hit the questions here. Um, and then I think today, as we go into the heart space, we're just going to go a little bit deeper and just, just step into a space here first thing this morning. We usually do a meditation at the end when we do them. Um, I think we'll just hold space here this morning and just checking in. Hey, Connie from Maine. Hey, Valerie from Colorado. Uh, Micah from Cali. Hey, Renard. Kendall. Christine from Australia. John from Minnesota. Yeah, we got, thank you guys for all being here today with us live. Oh my goodness, April and Albuquerque. I'd love to be there here real soon. Would be nice. Um, Kendall, been using the wisdom rings to clean and charge the obsidian stones. Yeah, I tell you, those wisdom rings are phenomenal. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the heart space. And we're just going to go a little bit deeper too. So if you've never done this, we go into the sacred space of the heart, moving our consciousness from the head into the heart with three simple breaths. From there, we're just going to bring in our light. So here we go. Please join us if you wish. Closing your eyes, putting your attention to your physical heart, finding your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that unconditional loving, supporting light of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Next, we connect heart to heart to creation, source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. Breathing in that light, that supporting energy of creation into the heart. Taking in that deep breath from both earth and creation at the same time, you become a column of light that is grounded into the earth, connected to creation, and your heart is expansive with your light. As you are in that sacred space of the heart, just ask your light, your soul, your consciousness to come more fully present in this here now moment. Just breathing in all that you are as you feel those tangles in the body, that is your light, your consciousness, your soul. Inviting your higher self fully into your physical body, imagining it, imagining it in every cell of the body in between every cell in your light, your soul, your consciousness just flows out into your creation. Again, bringing your attention back to the body, to you, and just asking your light, your presence to stay present in every moment of your creation. All right, fantastic. And hold that space as long as you wish. And it's always more powerful when we do it together because we hold space for one another. All right, so we'll move on to questions here this morning. We'll start with um, 
a question from the internet. Let's see. So this question has to do with um, an apartment building that is an apartment within a larger home. And there is copper foil lining all of the outside walls and roof. And it was used as basically like a Faraday cage to keep EMFs out. And it was built about 30 years ago. So both the tenants have Wi-Fi and they're wondering if the Wi-Fi frequencies are trapped inside of the building due to the copper foil. Um, can it go out through the windows? So basically, if that was built with the intention of keeping all electromagnetics and frequencies and everything out of the place, then yes, that it does stand to reason that you will contain everything within the place. So this was done at a point where people, you know, really misunderstood electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs, and people just think that all EMFs, all electromagnetics are bad. The truth is, is that everything in our physical universe is electromagnetic. Our heart is a big electromagnetic generator. There is an electromagnetic field in every atom as, as well as an entire universe. There is an electromagnetic field of flow. It is the torus, the toroidal field. This field of flow is the basis of all physical creation and beyond. I mean, it's in the emotional field, everything. Um, so electromagnetics is everything in our reality. It is the disharmonious electromagnetics that cause us issues. So for going back to the case where this home is a giant Faraday cage and you have your Wi-Fi inside, you have your electrical, all of that. Basically, a tensor field generator in the home um, would be the way to clear everything within that space is you know i'd suggest either a golden fire or the divine i am the divine i am tensor field generator one of my favorite um it just has a smaller sphere of influence um, but that is the one that would transform either of those generators would transform everything within that space and so then the wi-fi that is bouncing around is actually our harmonious beneficial field the case of a cell phone, a cell phone produces a disharmonious field that is non beneficial to your harmonious field. It, disharmon it, it, it disharmonizes it. It causes disruptions in your field. When you put a cell phone tab onto it, it harmonizes the field of the cell phone. So now your cell phone is actually producing a harmonious beneficial field because the way that everything is flowing. So that would be the same with your Wi-Fi that you have within this Faraday cage of a home. If you have this tensor field generator in there, it is going to change those transmissions of the Wi-Fi into a harmonious beneficial field. They'll still be within, but they'll be transformed. So that's what I would suggest for this particular case here um, that we had the question on the internet is simply a tensor field generator, um, whichever one you are more drawn to. All right, so we're gonna jump over here to questions on our live questions. That's all the questions that I had for emails this week. All right, John, could you give us the best protocol for healing ourselves and others with the quantum healer, quantum wisdom wand, and quantum heart coil. So with the quantum wisdom wand and the quantum heart coil and the wisdom wands, they are, they're a little bit different than the quantum healer was. The quantum healer, um, we won't go too much into this because we actually don't even make the quantum healers anymore. But a lot of this um, will be the same for the quantum healer. There's just some fields that the newer tools hold that the, tr that the traditional quantum healer does not hold. But when you are working with the coils and you are working with um, any of the wands, any of the quantum healer wands, or I'm sorry, the, 
the wisdom wands. Um, it's basically how healing takes place is there is clearing a release. So, so the release happens when you're in these fields and you just go into the heart space doing that three breaths, the Trinity breath, we always begin with the Trinity breath to go into the heart space because that moves us from here where we're holding on to all of our beliefs and emotions and everything else that we identify ourselves as when we move from here into the heart where we don't have all of those things that we hold on to as far as our identity. I am my trauma. I am my experience. We move into the heart. We no longer hold that. So then when you're in the heart space, you just immerse into that field. If you can have the visualization, imagination, it works phenomenally. If you do not have the visual, the visuals, the imagination, it is okay. All it takes is an, an intention, a soft intention. Your soul knows the intention that you want to do this healing work with yourself or with another. So we don't hold a hard intention where we try to limit or dictate or confine how this is supposed to happen or look. A soft intention is the surrender, the release, the letting go. And that's where we find the real true miracles happen is in the letting go from the human side. So healing, go into the heart space. You imagine that field or you intend that field of light around you. And then you allow, you let go. What we're letting go of are the things that no longer serve us. They're the programs, the belief structures, the emotions, old contracts, old promises, uh, things that no longer serve us and we don't need to know what they are. We can simply just be and allow. The allowing is a surrender. It is a trusting of our soul, of our higher consciousness to do all that is in the highest and best for us. Even if that means removing an identity that we've held on to for a long time such as I am my trauma, I am my illness. So letting go, release is one half of healing. The other half, harmonizing. Harmonizing everything that was released. Healing is simply releasing, harmonizing. Then we come to another space and place. Then we find more, we release. We harmonize, we come into a new place. This is what we do over and over and over again with these tools until we get through those onions that we've created through all these lifetimes of layers of experience of traumas and also of the beautiful things. I mentioned the releasing of traumas and experiences. They can also be the releasing of beautiful, beneficial things um, as an experience or as, um, you know, a belief. So the things that we release, we're releasing everything that no longer serves us, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. And it is our soul that we allow to pick and choose those things for us in our highest and best. So the healing that we do anymore with these fields, with the quantum heart coil, and the quantum wisdom wand, the wisdom wands, any of these, it is all about being in the heart space, the surrendering and the allowing of the release of all that no longer serves you. The harmonizing takes place simply and easily. So to harmonize, if you don't have a tool, you just simply say harmonize, take a breath and you're good. The tools, they hold that space of harmonizing anyway. So just being in this little, um, this little cocoon of light is a harmonizing field. So all you have to do is surrender and release and the harmonizing takes place automatically. So you can also with the wisdom wands, 
you can still run energy. You can still do the doing. So if you, you know, especially if you get caught in your pain body and you're like, oh man, that really hurts. And oh, I just don't feel like going in the heart and holding this beautiful visual space because man, I'm in pain. That's where you can start with the wand. Just run energy. Get yourself calm, collected, out of the pain body so you can step into the heart. Then you do your real work by simply allowing. So with that pain, you simply recognize it. You don't, you, you, you don't go into it. You don't try to figure out why or what's this trying to tell me. Or you just simply recognizing it, acknowledging it will bring you everything there, why it's there, its purpose. You recognize it. You don't have to consciously know it. You just are recognizing that pain. You recognize it. You allow it to be in existence. Allow it to be in existence. Put the field around it, whether you're running the wand or using your imagination to put that field there. Hold it, then let it go. So that's those are the ways that you can use the the newer the newer fields and the newer tools there. Pretty phenomenal stuff. Um, and we'll eventually get some videos on all of these too, so you don't have to look through the fifty questions Fridays to find out you know the specific uses on the wands. So, but luckily we also have Amber who goes through with all the YouTube videos. So if you uh, go back through on YouTube to watch these. Um, here within a week, Amber timestamps with uh, the subject heading. So that has been phenomenal for all of us. Uh, let's see, John. Uh, oh, nope, we already went through John. Johan, good morning. Can you please speak of a combination of the new wings of talk and the everything ring? What would that combination accomplish? So using the everything ring, um, the everything ring is really a super, super powerful ring. I mean, there is so much. There is the energies in there that we haven't singled and brought through yet. I mean, that everything ring contains the energies of all tensor rings in creation. Um, so when you use that as kind of like your, your toolbox, your battery, let's say, for that wings of talk, it's just it's opening up more potentials. So yeah, it's opening up more potentials. It's opening up more levels of, of space that you carry things to release. Because remember, everything is your energy. Everything, everything, everything is your energy. So as you open that up with using that everything ring and the wings of talk together, you are opening up a broader spectrum of where you hold things to be released and that just allows for more releasing to take place the everything ring i think is really a fantastic one but it is one that takes um it takes us it, it takes something to work with it and i'm not sure what i don't have it um i wore that ring for months and it really did stir up and help release things but I know there's a lot of you out there who are using that everything ring that reports such phenomenal results with that. So that's what I would suggest too, is to also look into the testimonials on the everything ring, because there are some people there that are doing some great work with that tool. Um, but sorry, yeah, I do not have enough experience to say any specifics on using um, those two tools together. The, the wisdom ring and the wing or the um, wings talk and the everything ring. Anything new on the wisdom generators? Hey, thanks, Kendall. No, getting getting close. I really feel there's something something close, and it has to do with the integration into the physical. I really feel so. Um, we do have those wisdom generators that I hope we can figure out the energetics for, so we can release those. Um, and they might not even be wisdom at that time by the time they come out who knows we also have a taurus pendant that we've been waiting to release for a long time like over a year and it's still going to be several months before that new 
Taurus pendant comes out and it's going to have whatever the new energies are in that as well. Who knows what that is or when that will be or what they're going to do. Um, Renard, hey, I placed the new wings of talk, divine I am, and harmonizer combination pendant in my ancestor altar. Can you speak to any benefits of being placed there? So at the wings of talk, the divine I am, and the harmonizer. So basically, all of those fields together, um, you know, it's just going to amplify what you're doing with the wings of talk. But when you place that onto your ancestor, ancestry altar, um, it's going to, because you are holding that intention, that space there for the ancestors, it's going to allow the clearing and releasing there. Um, what I would say is to sit in the heart space with it and see how much your soul wants to release of your ancestors. Because um, perspective, I don't know. I, I have some one of the, the people that I like to listen to some of their channelings um, talk about ancestors. And that's one of the things that we did there is releasing ancestors. And the way that he explained it is, is that they carry all of these, um, you know, throughout the time that just like our past lives and our ancestors, they carry all these things that may not serve us anymore. These limiting belief structures, these traumas, these, um, these experiences that are handed down through our DNA, through our lineage. And they were, might've been great at the time in the world that we lived in. Um, we probably have, you know, we've amassed all this beautiful, wonderful experience through ancestry, um, all this knowledge, but it was to traverse a different world. And that we're stepping into a whole new world again, it is just more of that palette that we need to allow to be released and cleared so that as we step forward, we can paint on a blank canvas without pulling in anything limiting or anything of that nature from the old. So to me, working with ancestors and you working with ancestors in this way, um, you know, and when you are in the heart space and when you are working with these fields, you can do no wrong because it's always the soul that's in charge. So if you attempt to, you know, step in and acknowledge and allow the releasing of any lineage that no longer serves, you are giving that up to your soul and allowing what is in the highest and best to happen. Um, so anyway, just a thought on, on that one, um, Renard, in, you know, feel into that, but feel into it from the heart and, and you know, and don't feel into it from the head and fall into any kind of fear over that. Because remember, it's always the soul that's in charge when you're doing the work and when you're working in these fields. Um, so anyway, and please take it for, yeah, please take what resonates with you because it would not have resonated me at one time along my path, but now it's like, oh yeah, totally. It makes sense. So, you know, just do what you feel resonates please, please. Um, you know, and that's with anything that I bring forward, just, um, take it with a grain of salt if it doesn't resonate. Um, I am, what are the energy, what energetics are best to use to raise the vibration of food, especially meat instantly when you have food at a restaurant or anywhere outside a home where you don't have physical tools? Oh, anywhere outside of the home. I don't have any physical tools. Also, can we access all the tools etherically or only just those that have an attunement in, in the channel? Um, so you can access these fields etherically, any of the fields, you know, you can, you can feel into the energy of these rings here. Um, but in order to actually work with these energy fields in your environment and keep them held there beyond just having your attention here, because you can draw in the energy of this ring and you can sit here and work with it for as long as your attention is on this field and you're holding that there. But as soon as you take your attention off, you no longer have this energetic field. But with some of the other tools, like um, when you use them to anchor light, 
when you anchor light with this or the wings to talk with any of the um, with any of the wands, the newer wands, or the, I should say the wands with the brass in them, or any of the wisdom wands, golden fire and light wands. When you anchor columns of light with these, those columns of light will stay there indefinitely. Um, but as far as running that energy to your food, um, yes, what I always used to do myself was I would go into the heart space, take the three breaths, and I would simply run my light. Now you can run your light in any way. You can do it like you would in some forms of Reiki where you just allow it to come from your heart out through your meridians, out through your hands and into your food. Or else you can actually just, you know, how, again, however you are a visual person to do this, or you can just imagine your light coming from your heart or your light coming from everywhere. And it just holds that energy on the food. Now, what I would do was, again, go into the heart space and I would run that energy from the heart out through the hands into the food. And I would visualize and intend that I go back, like, let's say the meat you would go back to, let's say it's a cow. You would go back to before this cow was born, you would hold the light, hold the space throughout the entire process of it um, in its mother as it's born, all the way through its life, all the way till the time it died. You would hold the space for the facility that it is butchered in. You would hold the light for every person touching and handling the meat, the facility, um, all the way through to where it comes to you. So that would mean that you would hold that light for the person who delivered it from the butcher shop. You would hold that light for the prep cook in the back of the kitchen. You'd hold that light for the person grilling it for your server all the way through. And it is quick and simple. So it's not like you have to have your attention there for the entire lifetime of the cow three seconds and that's all you really need um you know and you do the same you have that same intention when you're running that light for the vegetables for for anything for the salt you know for each spice so all it is is your intention and when you are in the heart space you have so much support in your awareness so you are putting your divine awareness onto the food you have the soft intention of sending that energy all the way back to before it was even came into existence and hold that light all the way through till the moment it hits your plate so that's how you can do it without the tools if you have a tool, the wisdom wand is a phenomenal one. The wisdom wand, just run that energy into the food, hold it there, intend that, well, know that it is in a no time space so that when you create this field around the food, you just know that this transcends time so that it is going to work back in time and it works instantly. All of this is um, can be limited by your beliefs in this. So that's why we got to be in the heart and we trust and we know. Because otherwise, if we're in the mind doing this, then your mind's sitting there telling you, oh, this isn't going to work. And, oh, we got to do this for an hour and, you know, everything else. Um, so just be in the heart, again, is the key to everything we do, being in the heart space. All right, next question. Does the everything ring contain the wisdom energy and possibly other future energies? I really believe that it does. Um, I'm not sure if they're just floating around in there. To me, it almost looks like you have to go in and take a sharp turn down and right into that field and, and access these new pockets of energy is the way it feels to me. Um, it also feels to me that whatever comes through that everything ring um, is only what you need, um, which still might be uncomfortable, which is why, you know, I don't like to play with it anymore, <laughs> but, um, it, it's a phenomenal ring. Um, so basically whatever comes through is 
what is in your highest and best. So yes, you may certainly be able to access some of those future energies and the wisdom energy in there as well. Um, it should all be available. JR, do you think the wisdom ring can help to release things in other people such as kidney stones, polyps, nodes? Yes. Um, for sure, these wisdom fields can do all of those things. Um, because any of these fields of consciousness I've seen do these things and the wisdom is even more phenomenal. Now working with other people. Um, yeah. So again, it's, it's just doing those, any of those exercises that we've done where we go into the heart space and we, and we invite another person into our, into our field, we create a sacred space um, from a heart space. We create a sacred space and we invite others into the field. And it's like a soul to soul thing. And I know that, you know, you've participated in some of these before, cause we have uh, several meditations and we've done on 50 questions, but when you invite that person into your field, um, and this is if you're doing it distance and perhaps if they don't know about it, you're doing the work on them or whatever. Um, then yes, you can just imagine doing the work with him right there or else if you were actually doing this in person, then totally. Yeah. You can just sit there with the person, ask them to go into the heart space, walk them into the heart space and just start doing the work, running the energy with the wand, feeling into it feeling when there's any kind of releasing going on because remember that's the key to healing is releasing and harmonizing so we get them to release we hold the field we run the energy we get them to release and then we simply harmonize the energies now like with uh, kidney stones things like that you can go back to the old way that we used to do things and use your visualization imagination and intention and see that stone run the energy to it imagine that it dissolves and dissipates um, so that it flows out and passes smoothly that is another way to do it so right now we're kind of jumping between paradigms we have one foot in each one of them is a visualization, imagination, and intention. And the other is simply holding the light and allowing the highest potentials of miracles to occur. You know, so you can totally jump back and forth there because a lot of us still need to do this, the doing, the running energy, the visualization, the holding space. Um, but if you can get past this and not get stuck in the imagination, visualization, intention, running energy, all of that stuff, if you can work in there and then step out of that and start to step into this surrendering, allowing, trusting. And if this doesn't work, you can always go back to this, but you'll find that the more things have potentials, possibilities for beyond your imagining when you work here versus that spot. Um, but try them both. Well, uh, let's see. All right, Susan. Um, let's see. I have a Harmony TensorField generator. And I've been using my modem more without turning on the Wi-Fi. So this is the, uh, Susan is the one who um, was just responding to the question about the apartment with the copper foil. And yes, having the Harmony generator in there is just perfect. Um, and... Wow, wonderful. And so, yeah, keep keep playing in there, Susan. And, you know, you might even find that you can still um, have your Wi-Fi on and it's not going to cause you any issues because it's harmonized within that field. Um, and, yes, those, 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 um, those energies can escape out the windows, too, was another part of your question earlier. But um, so... Yay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy that you are at peace with that because, um, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty cool thing that you have a Faraday cage you live in, especially you can feel it full, full of great energies. Um, Tam, I put my wings of talk in the Ascension pyramid with the water alchemist rings put on the pyramid. Will it have the same energetics as the, on the wings of talk. So, Yes, the um, so the Ascension Pyramid, um, 
the ascension pyramids are going to still carry all of the newest energies that are coming through so if you're using your standard wings of talk with your ascension pyramid um you know our, our original wings of talk it's perfectly fine it is totally going to be functioning as as the ascension pyramid with the newer wings of talk in it um it won't make a difference within the ascension pyramid so um yeah that's the beautiful thing about the ascension pyramids is that they do hold the energetics to you know all the newer updates and upgrades um that's all held within those fields uh victoria i got your heart coil pendant using it alone i feel almost nothing which surprised me when i wear it with a wisdom wand then i feel supremely calm and happy any thoughts you know so i tell you the the little quantum heart coils are working in many fields that we do not perceive um you know they're they're kind of like the whole concept of working with the the soul aspects that i never knew they were there until they were gone then i could tell that <laughs> that they weren't there um the the quantum heart coil is perceivably gentle because it is doing this work in spaces and places that we just don't have our sensors into um as much but yet some of us who do have our sensors in there that can cause all kinds of funny feelings going on as we've all been through in the past couple weeks of just so much going on in these levels and layers that we're not really aware of but yet holy crap they're affecting us and all we can say is wow that's just weird today um because we can't quite pinpoint what those energies and transformations are and it's kind of similar to the the coil now versus the um the wisdom wand pendants um the quantum wisdom wands or wisdom wand pendants um they're a lot more tangible um they are working in more of the fields that are more tangibly present and affecting us they're still working in those other fields but they're also working here in these fields a lot because the wands are kind of geared towards more of all physicality because we're we're using them um they're they're an active tool but yet that cocoon field that it holds is like that cocoon field that the coils hold so the coils are really a great one for people who are you know ultra sensitive that maybe something's too much or the coils are for people who just aren't into the energy things because it's not going to make them feel all funny it's um it's it's a gentle one that's not going to um cause a lot of disruptions um you know to to your being and well that's not true <laughs> totally will cause disruptions but it will be with a lot of peace um because disruptions is is what we need to do we need to release release harmonize equals healing um so yeah and it's amazing too on the tools too victoria on on different combinations and how they affect each of us differently and so we always encourage everybody to try out different combinations of the tools and ways to use them for years we were told never to give instructions with the tools because we did not want to be limiting or put them in a box so yes please do um always experiment and you may find something pretty phenomenal that's how the first activator was made um several people experimented the same and then i was like holy crap that's something real that we got here because everybody was building them the same um anyway william i'm completely new to this and i had some extreme mental trauma involving emf about 10 years ago can your tools when which ones help heal me from this do i need a special one a special one-on-one -on -one session so as far as any traumas um 
because it's it's all energy and so you know when you are in the field of the tools um you know i still think the the quantum heart coil or the quantum wisdom wand pendant or the wisdom wand um any of those three fields to me feel like they would serve you the best um because not only are they creating that that protection that barrier around you to where they're transforming emf that comes in but it is these fields are working on the releasing of traumas um there that's just part of what these are doing um so when you are releasing and working within these fields like with a trauma kind of like what we mentioned earlier here in this 50 questions friday on how to use these particular fields go back through and review that once you have one of these coil pendants um you know about going into the heart space and recognizing something such as the trauma but recognizing it without judging it um without putting any kind of labels categories anything on it just recognizing it with compassion from the heart holding your light with it and allow it allow it to go allow it to shift because many of those things especially if we held on to it for a decade it becomes a part of our being this is my trauma this is my experience i am my trauma i am my experience so sometimes those get to be a little bit tougher to let go of but when you're ready and you're in the heart space and you really don't even need the tools to do it but they hold a great space to help so maybe even just going back through and reviewing that quick simple little process here from earlier this hour and just going through that meditation of the releasing and allowing you may find that you might not even need to use the tool. These are training wheels and space holders for us to do the work. Ultimately, it comes down to us having to allow the work to happen. Um, Micah, have you ever thought of building a platform so you can have a sits or ascension pyramid on top and then mirrored below? So as above, so below, and also be like the hall and a balance talked about in Tom Kenyon's books. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. So basically um, talking about how we would have a pyramid and a platform where you would stand on it. And actually the platform would probably have you standing half and half and then that pyramid on the bottom. That is that's a reoccurring pattern actually in our harmonizer ring our harmonizer ring has that pattern in it it has a pyramid on top of the ring coming out of it and it has a pyramid on the bottom of the ring coming out of it and that harmonizer ring is the one that is working in all consciousness fields beyond electromagnetics and frequencies and in the field of electromagnetic frequency and so it's basically acting as a cosmic blender, bringing the energy, bringing that consciousness more into the physical. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like that idea of having a pyramid like that. I might have to look into that for sure. Um, and if nothing else, we'll just have to build an energetic one below it. <laughs> and so, but we'll play with that for sure, Micah. Thank you. Thank you much. Um, Victoria. Thanks for a great explanation on my heart coil pendant. Um, I can see I'm probably being protected by energies I can't handle very well as I'm ultra sensitive. The wisdom wand is probably grounding me to how the heart coil is working. Thanks so much. Um, wonderful, Victoria. I'm glad that you could, you know, feel into that and, and feel that working on you in those different ways with that quantum heart coil pendant and that quantum wisdom one pendant. Um, and to me, that's, I note that too, because when I wear, for a while, I was only wearing my quantum heart pendant. I had to take all my other tools off. And then the only thing that I've added is the, um, the wisdom wands. And yes, those two together are pretty phenomenal. Um, they work really well together. And at some point in time, right now we can't get, any more silver tube um but as soon as we get silver tube in i'm gonna make these longer ones and this is the quantum heart coil but whew, this little guy is pretty amazing it's a it's a fun one um 
but yeah, when we get more silver in, we'll be making more fun toys. Okay. So it looks like we are through questions here. Unless anybody has any more, I'm going to stop over here and check on chat. And then I want to talk about a new toolkit that we are releasing. So again, just checking over here on chat side, seeing everybody. All right. So what do we have new today? Well, today we have just released the... Um, we're not doing the light workers kit yet. That one's coming soon, but we are doing the grid workers kit. So for those who like to do grid work, whether they are out there clearing, uh, you know, clearing old grid systems, old obelisks on your college campus, or if you, you know, you want to go to Washington DC and take your crack at that, or if you are, you know, if you're doing grid clearing, um, it's a great set or if you are creating grids, um, you can create grids over some of these things. Um, so instead of like clearing cell phone towers and things like that, anchoring columns of light into a cell phone tower to produce a, bene produce a beneficial energy, you can also use the quantum grid points that come in this kit to place on either side of a line of cell phone towers. And then that grid will then affect all the cell phone towers that are in that line between the pyramids. Um, so that's another way that you can use these gridding tools. Um, and then the way most people just use them is simply taking a number of these grid points, placing them around their property, and then setting their intention of what they want that space to be. Um, so you're creating sacred space with these grids. There's a lot of ways to use grids. And some of them are talked about on some of the videos. But what this, um, the grid workers kit comes with, the Ascension Grid Pyramid. So this is one that um, most of us put in our cars. They love to travel in a vehicle. But this is like the center of your grid system. Then you get four of the quantum grid points. So you put your quantum grid points out around, let's say, your property. They all connect into this particular one that you use like on your altar, in your car, in the center of your home however it is that you utilize it because then when your attention goes to this particular tool this connects into the rest of that grid so this is kind of like your your input your keyboard that you can input your intentions of what you want that flavor of the grid to hold whether it is for healing for creativity for transformation for healing whatever that is you put your intention into this piece and that transform that transmits out into that grid that you've created with your quantum grid points. The third tool, so this grid workers kit comes with the Ascension Grid Pyramid. It comes with four of the quantum grid points. And it comes with your choice of a practitioner sized or a mini sized golden fire and light wand. Again, we use the quantum grid points to create our grid, our outer perimeters. We use the ascension grid pyramid as our input and our receiver for what we're inputting into this grid to create that space. Goes in, there's a lot you can do with these grid systems. Then the third component is the, the, uh, the golden fire and light wands. And these wands you can use to create those columns of light. We did not use the wisdom wands for this particular set because the wisdom wands, they're all, there's a lot more you can do with them. They get to be a little bit more complicated. But when you are simply creating the columns of light that you would as a grid worker, you can create columns of light to create these grids. You can also use the quantum grid points and they can work together. So the reason that you have the golden fire and light wand in this grid workers kit is because the clearing as well. So not only can you anchor the columns of light to create beneficial grid systems, you can create the columns of light into cell phone towers, which then the towers will produce beneficial energies, beneficial frequencies. And you can also anchor these columns of light for healing work into your own home. You can anchor them into cemeteries to cross over ghosts waywards. 
And again, for grid workers, um, if you are out there working with these grid lines and you are working with geopathic geomagnetic stress lines or underground waterways, you can come in and creating with the columns of light and with the grids, you can work with these earth grids. You can move them, clear them, um, do that healing work with them. So these grids work with the earth-based geomagnetic grids. They also work with those higher grids of light because that is what we are working with truly is light. Um, and then you can also use them in conjunction with your smaller crystal grid setups. Um, you know, so there's a variety of ways that people do gridding work that they are just naturally drawn to and compelled to do. And so this tool set, um, you know, you save like, what is it like 60 bucks or something like that on, on this tool set, um, for the, the set with the mini wand, these ones are 388. And right now we are offering, um, a set of three free seconds as we call them the Ascension grid points, or I'm sorry, the quantum grid points. Um, we have a whole stock of these that we call seconds that maybe have a broken tip or else maybe um, they're all the pedalite or all quartz crystal. Um, some of them have rings in them. It's just a variety of quantum grid points that are not, um, don't have the aesthetics for selling, but you would receive three of these free also with that um, kit. So, um, and we have quite a few of those. So if you are into grid working, um, this this grid workers kit is a pretty phenomenal one um and these are pretty fantastic too wonderful passive tool but it is a work of art and it is beautiful and like i say they love to ride in cars and then it's basically you have a moving grid with you wherever you go all right so that is the announcement for a new toolkit that just came out um and that just came out today all right so we got a few more questions here um nika i saw that the silver silver wisdom pendant how does that feel different from the silver brass right um you know they all hold the same field the the um the wisdom wand pendant this is the copper brass then we have the silver brass which those two feel really similar to each other and then we have the silver silver um there's something different with that silver silver i'm not sure what it is it's pretty phenomenal um when i put a silver silver on holy smokes i could feel it um i could feel something different shifting not sure what that something different is that it is shifting but the silver silver does carry something a little different in its field again to qualify that i don't know what that is and i wouldn't say that it's better but there is more to it um so yeah i i but i'm really partial to the silver silver i'm really partial to almost silver everything Except for my bracelets, I can still wear copper, but, um, so anyway, sorry, I was not able to ex give you a very good explanation for the difference between the, the brass and the silver on the quantum wisdom ones. Uh, Denise, is there a limit to the distance between small grid points and grid points? Um, so no, actually when you are using the, the grid points, um, doesn't matter if you are using a giant Ascension pyramid or the Ascension grid pyramid or the quantum grid points. When you are laying out that grid, you can ship one of these to Singapore, one to Zimbabwe, one to wherever. And when those are placed there, you are creating that space that is between those three grid points. So those three grid points can be clear across the continent or the world, and they are still creating that grid. Um, they're still, you know, so it's going to be the same power and potency within that field. And so in that field, you are, you can go through and put your programs and intentions into that field. 
And then those that are in alignment with those programs and intentions will have all of that support. Those who are, aren't in alignment, as the website says on that product page, sleepers will stay asleep. These fields aren't going to do a lot of good for people who aren't in that same vibratory rate. Those people that are in that same vibration, you are going to open up a whole new world for them to access these energies. And they won't know where they're from. That's okay. Um, but you'll be holding that space for, for that access. Um, JR, can I lay a person inside that four quantum grid pyramid with the ascension grid pyramid above their head? Who, yeah, JR, I really feel like you can create a pretty awesome space by having these four grid points at the base and bringing this one up to the top, you know, and especially if you are, you know, and it almost be nice if you're able to even measure out where these legs hit, you know, and, and get your points really similar at the base of where these would be. Um, that's kind of how it feels to me. In a 60 degree pyramid, um, how you would tell where that base is, is the length between this top point and where this would theoretically hit the floor, where it would intersect the floor is the same distance as it would be between this point and this point. So right here on this pyramid, this tip and this tip is the same distance across as this tip to this tip. That's what makes a 60 degree pyramid is these two lengths are the same. So um, thank you, JR, for that visual and for that understanding, uh, because yeah, it does look like you can create a pretty neat space using these four at the base and this one at the top. Um, and then you can add rings to it and add all your tools inside of it. And it's just amping up the space because it does, it does create a container from what I see. Um, awesome. So I guess put the alchemist rings on the pyramid. Ah, uh, yeah. That little alchemist set's pretty amazing on these pyramids. So for mine that I have in my car, I use that um, that small alchemist set on these. And it and it does some amazing things. And you know, of course, um, I'll put a tensor field generator here down inside underneath of it. Um, all kinds of fun stuff you can do to dress up these pyramids energetically. So anyway, um, thank you all for being here today and for shining your light. And um, I hope that that little exercise that we talked about today of releasing and harmonizing, that you can make that your own, simplify it even more, be in the heart space with that concept and try that out. Because again, we see miracles every day and the more of us that can just take a few minutes and create and witness these miracles that goes into the entire field of mass consciousness. And when we do these things for ourselves, we are affecting all of creation. So thank you all for bringing in more of your light, more of your consciousness and for playing. That's all we need to do is play. So anyway, <laughs> off my soapbox, see you all next time. Have a phenomenal weekend.